Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my 2020 deck collection and declutter series. Today's decks are going to be in the category of Lenormand and Lenormand Light. Like, not Lenormand Light. This is hard to say. Lenormand Like decks. <laughs> Um, so these are decks that I read that are either actually the Lenormand system or that I read in a way that's similar to Lenormand and so I put them in this category. I hope that sums it up. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to dive in because these videos have been getting long and I have a few more categories that I would like to get filmed, so let's jump in. The first Lenormand deck is the Gilded Reverie Lenormand by Chiro Marchetti. This was actually the first Lenormand deck that I ever picked up and... <laughs> This has such nostalgia for me. It's actually kind of a large Lenormand deck. It's about a like regular playing card size, if not just a bit bigger. Um, like I have Oracle decks that are actually smaller than this, but Chiro's deck, I mean, it is gilded. It's very well worn because this one is seen a lot of use, is really vividly um, and beautifully illustrated. I absolutely love this deck. Um, it is just a classic Lenormand. There's no extra cards whatsoever. There's not an extra man, not an extra woman. Um, now, Chiro originally came out with this deck in an expanded version that had a bunch of extra cards. Then that one went out of print, and he had this one, which was just the classic um, 36 cards. And then later, he reissued this deck in the expanded edition, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to buy another copy of it. I really like this one. It's the one that I first learned the Norman on and it's it's special so it's not going anywhere I'm definitely keeping this deck the next Lenormand that I bought was this really sweet little mini deck and I bought this from an artist in I believe Poland Clara Spalinska I'm really bad at pronouncing stuff um, but this is the Midia Lenormand and it's the mini and the Midia is such a sweet deck this one does have some extra cards, so actually let me see. I believe if I remember, yeah, there's an extra man, an extra woman, and a happy squirrel card. And I'd actually never encountered the happy squirrel ever until I got this deck. So I remember having to Google and try to figure out what the heck the happy squirrel was about. Um, if you don't know, I'll let you look it up because it's kind of a fun discovery. In any case, um, this was really great for playing with larger spreads, and actually ever since I bought this deck, um, and Peggy made me this little cute leather pouch for it, this deck has lived in my purse. In fact, I literally just had to go get it in order to put it into this video. Um, it's just great. It's gray tones. It's really beautifully drawn. The symbols are large and easy to see. They're not cluttered up images at all, and I find it really, really easy to read with. It does shuffle really well. It's like this like matte smooth cardstock, but it's really thin. Um, and this deck and I have done a lot of readings together, like a lot, a lot of readings together. It's probably the Lenormand that's seen the most use just because it's always on my person, right? I always have it. It's so little. And anytime I've gone through any kind of stressful life experience and I feel like I need to lean into cardamancy, I always do some Lenormand readings. And this is the one that is on me. So this is the one I end up using. I don't really remember a lot about the order. Well, maybe I do remember the order. So I think the next one I got after that one was this Claire de Lune. I'm pretty sure this is the one that came next. The Claire de Lune Lenormand. This is by Anna Turian. The second I saw this deck, and I think I found this deck first, I think it was on, um, I want to say it was Kelly at the Truth and Stories channel. This is so beautiful. It is actually, um, Anna colored this deck so that it literally looks like these objects oops, are lit up by moonlight. And they actually have moons. This is the back of the card. What is it on there? It's like something on there. Oh, it's just a little bit of like condensation or something from my drink that's here. Um, but sorry, let me hold these better. There we go. These are just beautiful. I, lo I just love the effect. It's a magical effect where you really can, it, it's just colored in such a way with like subtle yellows, um, blues, and peaches. Like, here's the mice. It's really hard to describe, but the way she's used color literally makes it look lit up by moonlight. Like, there's that yellowy green color. It's just, I love this tree. But again, this looks great in a spread. The symbols are large and easy to see. The images are uncluttered. And this is just, it was just, yeah, it's so beautiful. And I had my eyes on this, and then it went out of print for a while, and then it came back, and I snapped it up. Now, you can still get this deck, I believe, but I don't think you can get it in this tin anymore. In fact, I think this tin was something that um, 
I think this is something that Anna did herself and it's got like a like a sticker image on the top and then there's this piece of like felt in the inside um, this is such a beautiful deck this one also has an extra man and an extra woman card that's her business card um, and the title card and I usually just keep those tucked into this little fold-out sheet with Lenormand decks I don't find myself like using any guidebooks or anything like that I just read them like Lenormand decks so I think I can't remember. This one may have actually come before the Claire de Lune. I also picked up the Fairy Tale Lenormand. This was a collaboration between Arwen Lynch and Lisa Hunt, um, and this was like my consolation prize for not being able to get the um, Fairy Tale Tarot. It, this is so sweet, and it, the back design is like keyholes, and so it kind of matches up with the Fairy Tale Tarot's key backs, um, which I think is really cool. This is really sweet as a Lenormand because each one of these images does associate with a different fairy tale. It really actually is a bit busy and cluttered for a Lenormand deck, but I just adore Lisa Hunt's artwork and I love fairy tales, so I love that this is a fairy tale themed Lenormand. Um, it's not really my go-to for Lenormand spreads because the, the artwork is just a little bit too busy and too cluttered and I like those really clear simple scenes um, or simple objects in Lenormand decks, so I don't use this one as much, but I love having it. I don't know that I would really want to rehome this because I do enjoy it. It did have an extra man and an extra woman card, um, and the guidebook is actually where you get to hear about the fairy tales, so that's really, oops, that's really well done, and I love that this came in a tin also, um, but it is a much chunkier tin. You can tell that it like doesn't need to be this thick. It could have been it could have been quite a bit thinner, but um, the book is a little bit chunky, so that's a fun one. Okay, next up, I think this one was probably the one I got the next, is the Prince Lenormand. This is a deck, I think this was the first deck that Ethany created, and I think I got this at Northwest Terrace Symposium in... 2019. There was a few extra cards with this one, so this is a nice genderless person card, um, and I believe this is also meant to be a different kind of person card. Um, and then you also had an extra man and an extra woman. And this style of this deck is so, so cute. These are the backs, and it is silver gilded. Oh, there we go. I just like it. It's got a really playful, colorful style and it's very because it's so bright and colorful this one works great in large spreads too it just yeah it's just great it's everything you need the symbols are really easy to find or see rather um child snake house yeah it's great i have no complaints about this deck and the card stocks are like really nice this actually shuffles really great uh and size wise Something else I didn't really talk about here, but you can see that there is a big size variation in Lenormand decks. Um, the smaller decks are easier in larger spread, easier to work with in larger spreads rather. But like you can tell, like there's definitely different sizes for the cards. Like they're all different. They're all different sizes. I don't think I could let any of these go actually. Um, but I don't have a lot of Lenormand decks, so we'll see how I do. Um, I'm just going to show this one next. It's not in the order I got it, but that's okay. This is my most recent um, addition to my collection, and this is the House of Shadows Lenormand deck. Um, this one has quite a few extra cards, but I really love this. I got this because I had gotten the Shadowland Tarot by Monica Badursky, who is the artist of this deck. And yeah, here's one of the extra cards, Ancestors. Um, and I really just loved her style, and I thought it'd be really cool to have the... Lenormand deck that also is kind of shadowy and fun. So I scooped this one up and the extra cards have actually been really useful I've been finding in readings. So I actually really like this. I will probably gravitate more towards this deck um, in the darker months of the year typically, but it, it works really great. And there's enough extra cards to be able to do what you need to do from a Lenormand perspective. I only wish that the backs didn't have all these words on them because I kind of am not a fan of that. I shouldn't say kind of, I'm not a fan of words on the backs of my cards. Um, but that is the House of Shadows Lenormand. That's not going anywhere. This is the Burning Serpent Oracle by Robert M. Place and Rachel Pollock. This was a bit of a splurge. I don't know if this one is still in print. It did have an extra man and woman card. Um, but I picked this up because the book that comes along with this and this, it just, it takes Lenormand to another place. Like, Robert M. Place does things with 
a significant amount of depth, and so does Rachel Pollock. So the two of them partnering up, I just couldn't resist. Um, the cards are a little trickier to read because some of the cards go a little bit different of a way. Like the red clover, if you're used to seeing like a three-leaf clover or four-leaf clover, um, can be a little trickier. But most of them are pretty straightforward. The gold ring instead of the ring. And then you've got these extra Isis and Osiris cards, which I think are a cool addition. Um, most of them, I don't know, I just I love Robert M. Place's artistic style. And I love the way that these were depicted. So we have the owl and the mouse here. And I believe this was a... I can't remember. I think that was instead of the birds. Um, woman card, the book of life instead of the book, the rusted cross instead of the cross. Um, so a few changes. The book that you can get for this deck is, is hefty. The girl and the boy instead of the child. Um hound yeah so this is really pretty I've only worked with it a little bit um, the flaming tree cat of three tails the garden um, pretty classical again this is quite a large one I'd say it's I think it's the same size as this um, gilded reverie one so these are my two like I would say largest um, Lenormand decks but really cool I don't think I could see myself and I think this may be out of print now so that's not going anywhere the Celtic Lenormand I actually stumbled on in a second-hand shop, and I'm so glad I picked this one up. In fact, I would say this is one that I would happily recommend to most people because the book for this, so this is actually written by Chloe McCracken, but the artwork is by Will Worthington. He is the same artist that uh, did the Wildwood Tarot as well as the Druid Craft Tarot. So this one works really well with those. If you're looking for like a Celtic spin on Lenormand, this one is fabulous and the book that comes with it will actually help to teach you Lenormand if you would like and it will help you to do different things with Lenormand. This is very outside of tradition I would say but there's information here on spiritual readings, on using these cards, um, on dark and light, on spell use, on deities maybe associated with the different cards. Um, there's a lot of depth here if you really wanted to kind of deep dive and really get even more out of your Lenormand. I think that's really fun. And the card size, deceptively, the box is quite big, but the card size is, is smaller. I would say it's more like the um, Claire de Lune card size. Um, and these are fantastic. So really beautiful imagery. Still pretty easy to see what you're looking at though. Um, and so fish, we have the salmon there, the path. You see, you've got all these really wonderful Celtic, um, Celtic nods. It isn't as, I would say it's a little bit trickier to use out of the gate than the original Lenormand, something with like less cluttery images, because again, there are full painted scenes here, or full illustrated scenes. Something like that, the key is really easy. Same thing with the broom and the mice and the anchor. But here I'm hesitating. What is 19? This is the tower. But it took me a second because it doesn't look very towerish, right? Um, there are a ton of extra cards with this deck. So I've set the deck up the way that I like to use it. Um, but there's a bunch of alternative cards. So you can choose. Um, there's an extra man and a woman. There's a cat instead of the dog card if you want. There's a different child card. For birds, you can choose the owls, which is what I have in the deck now, or you can do chickens, or you can do these songbirds. For the snake, you can use the traditional snake, which is what I have in here. I don't know if I can show you. Um, it's more of like a sinister looking snake, which is sort of more how I read with the snake card. Um, but if you wanted to go with something a little bit more Celtic and pagan friendly, here's a transform transformation style snake image with a snake shedding its skin. Um, for the tree, you can choose the, like the summer, um, like the oak tree or the holly tree. So very Celtic there. So here is the oak tree, or you can trade it out for the holly tree. And you can have a male or a female rider. So I actually have a female rider in the deck right now. So these are all the extra cards and I just keep them under this tray. Um, but I love how customizable the deck is in that way you can really sort of make it your own. Um, and I think that's really cool. If I had to only have like one Lenormand deck, I might be tempted just because this one is so flexible and how you can, how you can work with it. But I really like it. That's not going anywhere. I don't think I'm going to do very well in this category, guys. Next up is the 1889 Lenormand. Um, I got this earlier this year 
And this is in a beautiful tuck box, by the way. Holy, holy cow. Um, I haven't really looked at the book, to be honest, and I don't think there are any extra cards in here, but I could be mistaken. This deck is so beautiful. It's got this like matte gold gilding. That's what the backings look like. It's beautiful. I think I heard about this deck during um, a tag that was going around on YouTube where people were talking about their top five tarot, type five oracle, top five Lenormand or something like that. And everybody was talking about this one. Um, the images are really clear and easy to see. You've got playing card insets. It's got this kind of aged feel, like this is the hearse instead of the coffin. Um, really easy to read, good size, and a beautiful, like luxurious feeling card stock. These just feel really, really luxe, and I love this deck. In fact, I think it's probably at this point my favorite of all of them. It, it, yeah, I would say this is probably my favorite. Like if I just had to pick one visually to work with, this is the one I'd pick. It's kind of funny. I'm like, oh, I'd pick the Celtic one because of its flexibility, but I would pick this one for its sheer beauty. And yeah, it's very traditional. Again, there's no extra cards. There's nothing else in here, um, but it's really, really lovely. I think I have another dog trying to get in. Okay, so that one's not going anywhere either. And this one is pretty dang special. So this is my Bitmoji Lenormand. So Peggy and I each have one of these and um, there's instructions on how to make these yourself. I didn't have to do it because the very lovely Julie Peekaboo Rose actually did mine for me um, and Peggy's for me. I love this riding the ladybug in the garden um, card. But this is basically, um, you can make your own using Bitmoji images once you've created your Bitmoji avatar. And um, and then load all the imagery somehow into something and then send it to make playing cards. I, I don't know, man, there's instructions somewhere. Um, I believe it was Jamie Sawyer of the Sawyer's Path Tarot who first put out the instructions. But to be honest, other than looking at other people's and thinking they were cute, I didn't think I'd ever have one of these. Look, I'm writing a unicorn in the writer card. Um, these are so dang cute. Um, so there's actually a surprise unboxing because Peggy didn't know she was getting this and we both got, um, hers has her bitmoji on it, of course. Um, there's Peggy in mine, so she's my she's my man in my man card, um, which just makes sense. So this is the, like one of my favorites for personal readings because, of course, I see Peggy and I see me in it, and it just feels really like it feels so personalized. How can I not love it? So that is the bit more bit moji Lenormand. Um, again, it's something you kind of have to put together yourself and then print yourself. I still need some kind of tin or container for this. Oh, I think I have a tin actually that these would fit in. Um, so I need to do that maybe after this video. Okay, so that is almost it for my Lenormand. I've got two that are Lenormand-like that we're going to talk about, but first, my final Lenormand is my Sawyer's Path Lenormand tiles. Oh my gosh. And just like the um, tarot, I love these. They're such a perfect size. And the Sawyer's Path Lenormand is really, really cute. Um, I love Jamie's art style. It's right up my alley with its bright colors. There's the stork. Um, and these just have the Sawyer's Path logo on the back. I ordered these at the same time that I got my tarot tiles. Um, so it was quite an investment all at once, but I just, I had to. The tower, the stars. And these are great for a grand tableau. I love that the gentleman and the lady card are animal based, so they can be um, genderless, they can be trans, they can be whatever. Uh, and I love that. They're just, they're so satisfying. They're so satisfying. There's the ship. I love this child card with like the sippy cup. I just bounced mine. Okay, I gotta put these away. But I really love these. Again, just like my tarot tiles, these are one of my treasured possessions for sure. And I appreciate them so, so much. I'm so glad I got them. Okay, that leaves me with two Lenormand-like decks. So let's talk about those real quick, and then we'll see if I'm able to declutter anything. Oh, yeah, I don't know. So this one I got in a trade. Oh, this little linen bag is totally falling apart. I kept meaning to put these in a Peggy bag, and I just haven't yet. Um, oh, yeah, that's really, that's really done. Not a big fan of these lightweight linen bags, but it was better than nothing. Okay, 
So this is the Collected Memories deck. I think you can still get this. This is by Pam, Pam Wishbow. And I believe I have a walkthrough of this deck on my channel. It's quite a chunky little deck. Um, and it's very monochromatic. So it's just this like red and gray. This is what the backings look like. Um, but it's just all these different little objects. It reads actually really well intuitively and I had a lot of fun with this deck. I worked with it for a week. Um, I will say I miss color. There's something about this red and gray. I don't know. And then the other thing that trips me up about this deck a little bit, um, when I've kind of gone back to look at it since working with it that first week, is that the items in the cards feel like they're more modern, but sometimes not. Like you have Goblet and Candle and Mirror, which is fine. Um, and then you have a tarot deck. That's cute. Um, there's other modern stuff in here too, though. I'm not going to find any now that I'm looking, though, of course. That's how it goes. Jar, garlic, kitchen knife, scissors, all spider, pocket knife. Why can't I find any? I swear I'm not making it up. Dice. Maybe there's only a couple more modern cards. Ancient coin, glasses. Okay, I'm clearly, clearly imagining things. Calipers, doll hand, planchette. Really? Did I not pass any? Like, I felt like I felt like the first time I used this, I stumbled into some modern. I don't know, man. I may be full of my, may be full of crap. Um, these have this kind of really thick, kind of heavy feeling cardstock, kind of laminated. Um, they shuffle beautifully hand over hand, and they do read really well, like in a Lenormand style, where you like lay out maybe three cards and you go boom, 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 like word, 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 make a sentence. Um, so like rabbit book crown could be luck, secrets, um, sovereignty or something. And then you can put that into a sentence and read it very Lenormand style. I think if you were interested in something like very fortune tellery, very um, predictive, that decks like this are really good for helping you to form those like predictions, form those structures. And this is great for that. That being said, given that I love the Lenormand system so much, I find that this isn't something that I get excited to reach for as much as I think it's really fun and really unique. I just don't know if ultimately it's going to be one that I need to keep. So I think I'm going to put this aside in my possibly rehoming pile. I wonder if it's even a good idea to put these back in here. I guess it's better than, yeah, these are going to have to get some kind of other bag or box. Because they're not going to, they're not going to stay in there. But anyways, I'm going to put that aside for now. Um, and then the other one that I would say is very Lenormand-like in how it how it works is my um, first edition Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle. So this deck comes with a bunch of like extra paraphernalia, um, and I did end up getting the there's like a, there was like a whole bunch of stories that kind of went along with this deck. This is a Patrick Valenza creation, so it. It, it really is sort of an immersive experience all its own. You have Mildred's letter, you have, there was extra cards. I feel like the only card that I'm missing is there was a harp card at one point that was released. Um, and there's been other expansions since then. This is the edition where the backings of the deck create a Ouija board, it's a puzzle. And you can basically make up, make this big Ouija board. The Mildred Paint Secret Pocket Oracle is kind of like a creepy, like little divination deck, very Lenormand style, very Lenormand like sized. This is probably about the same size, yeah, as my Midia Lenormand, um, but it's obviously a lot thicker because there's a lot more cards. <sighs> Here's the thing about this deck. As fun as this has been to play with in like at the Halloween time or so, again, I think, I think I'm probably, I don't think I really need this in my collection anymore, if I'm being completely honest. I have really enjoyed playing with this deck, but it's just, it's not something that I feel like reaching for unless it's like that time of year, right? And while I don't mind that, I feel like there's other things I would also play with. Like Halloween time, I can play with my House of Shadows Lenormand, which is actually in the Lenormand system. Um, so I think this is one I would consider rehoming um, with all of its, <laughs> cute little photo and its title card and these um, documents that come with it have lists of like keywords for the cards so you can actually work with an existing system they read very well intuitively as well because they're simple symbols and things like that um, yeah there was like a shovel card you got um, as a bit of an add-on 
at one point. Um, so yeah, and then there, this was this was the whole shovel thing. There was like a an extra like letter, and it was kind of like a mystery. And then you like dug her up, and it was. I'm really bad at explaining this. I'm sure there's good videos that kind of talk through the story of this deck and kind of how it came about and its lore and all that stuff. But um, I don't think this deck and me are destined for a lifelong relationship. So I think let's take a look at the two. Uh oh. So it's basically my two Lenormand like decks that I'm considering. Um, rehoming and I think I can actually let both of these go. So Collected Memories and my Mildred Payne Secret, Secret Pocket Oracle both I think I can safely say that I'm willing to let those go. I'm also a little bit a little bit tempted to consider passing on the Fairy Tale Lenormand because other than working with it with my Fairy Tale Tarot by Lisa Hunt um, I'm not very often drawn to work with it, but I also don't have that many Lenormand decks, so let's see what I've got here. So I've got one, okay, I've got my tiles, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I've got eleven Lenormand decks. Um, and yeah, not counting the tiles, <laughs> if I want to just, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I've actually got 10 if I don't count my tiles, which, why would I not count my tiles? But I'm just saying. So that's not too crazy. That's not too crazy. I think I'm going to just, I'm going to be content. I'm going to keep all of these. So I don't, because I don't feel like these are taking up an ex ex exorbitant amount of space. So yeah, I'm going to keep all of these. I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to keep all of these. My tiles. So that is my Lenormand collection as of right now. And at the time I'm filming this, it is currently June 2020. Hopefully these videos are going to be starting to go up in June. I don't know what order and all that stuff. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I am really enjoying sharing my full deck collection with you guys. I'm literally sharing every deck. So I am Oracle, Lenormand, Tarot, the whole bit through this series. I just categorized them into kind of like little families of of themes. And uh, I really appreciate you hanging out and sharing this with me. This is a lot of fun. And yeah, remember to like, share, subscribe, do all the good things. And if you would like to book a tarot reading with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thanks guys. Bye.